Hey, welcome back to another episode of Psychonaut Sessions Ultraverse Thursdays. This is your host, Daniel Muller, and then your co-host, Aaron, Aaron Conaway. Yeah, how you doing, man? I'm doing well. I'm digging these uh, reread Thursdays. I am too. I look forward to them so much. They're they're the the light of my life. I actually, uh, well, no, you know what? Let's let's get into the coverage of this issue, and as we get into the next first page or two, I've got a special announcement I want to make. All okay. right, all right. Um, so, okay, hard case number three. We re- reviewed hard case number one and two. Any initial impressions on the cover? Um, I mean, not. Well, my initial impression is, man, is he needs a chiropractor for his hips. <laughs> it's just, yeah. But yeah otherwise, it, nah. this this issue suffers a lot, and I think Hard Case in general has from the Jim Lee paradigm of people trying to draw like Jim Lee, but not really equipped to draw like Jim Lee. Right. You know, that era of comics, it, this issue definitely suffers hard from that. And it's weird because not a lot of Ultraverse comics did. A lot of Ultraverse comics were, you know, they had kind of unique artists like Norm Brayfogel, um, uh, help me out here, Derek Robertson, Barry Windsor Smith. Who, even. Yeah, we'll get to eventually. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll get to, but, you know, why? Ben Herrera on Freaks. Yeah. Yeah, like so. Why did they have some of their artists try so hard to be like Image? It's just weird to me. Yeah, so I could, couldn't speak to that if I knew. Yeah, this this issue, this the cover of this issue is not very impress, impressive to me. So yeah, but all right, well we can dive in. Um, what I'm calling hard case so far is uh, the beach battle book. <laughs> because every battle so far has happened on a beach, including this one. Same beach. Yeah, this is a volatile uh, set of sta- sand. Yeah, Lord, I would not want to live here. Um, but we're basically getting a recount of Choice. See, I said Choice and that Chance this you time. You got it right this time. Um, of Choice coming into the fray into hard, into hard Case's life, and she has these people from the Choice Corporation going after her and these guys from the corporation are kind of giving um just kind of a recap and a lowdown and they're like watching after her and that's basically it we got james hudnall as the writer jim callahan as the penciler rodney ramos as the inker and then the man the myth tim eldred tim eldred as the letter and moose bauman i mean he's done some of the better yep. coloring yep with the uh, with ultraverse that we've read yeah. Um, I mean, Tim Eldred, though, is our, I mean, we mentioned it every single time, but he, he is the MVP of Ultraverse thus far. Yeah, absolutely. And so now it's time for my special announcement, Aaron. All right. I, I want to make a special surprise announcement. Aaron does not even know this. Is Tim I, Eldred in your room right now? Tim Eldred. <laughs> well, he will be. Let's say that. I have been corresponding with Tim Eldred. I hunted him down. I found him. And he is willing to jump on the channel and have an interview with you and I. No kidding. Yep. So we're going to be interviewing literally our, our top star. And I told him, I was like, we've been going through all these Ultraverse books. And I feel bad for every other creator on this book because it's basically <laughs> been the Tim Eldred show. <laughs> That's not even a lie. Uh, nope, it's not. So when he watches That's these, awesome. when he watches these, he'll know for certain. Uh, word of warning, though, and I'm actually so he's actually he's got one of the most comprehensive websites of any creative out there, just like loaded with stuff and laid out really well. Really cool, erudite guy. Um, but he's got a, a, a like a post on there that talks about his years at Malibu, and he actually does not look too fondly back on this period. Oh. So, as much as we uh, appreciate this time period and books and stuff, we're going to be getting kind of like an alternate point of view of the experience. Well, so, fair enough. Yeah, no hard hitting journalism on an Ultraverse reread. Yeah, that'll be that'll be kind of cool. You realize he did Warriors of Plasm. Wait, he did 
the lettering, or did he do something no, else on Warriors no, of Plasm? No, he helped draw Warriors of Plasm. He helped no, did a lot of the work shit. on it. I think he did inking and stuff, like because Dave Gibbons did some of the original drawing, but um, it was a book that he, he worked on pretty hard. All right, well, we're so. going to have to deviate from Ultraverse when we yeah, talk to it. Yeah, Oh, he's done a lot of stuff. So no, yeah, I knew have, that, but I didn't yeah. know if it was like we were just going to talk Ultraverse, but now that I know Warriors of Plasm is in the mix. Yeah, yeah. we're going to... Yeah, I told him this was going to be a comprehensive kind of interview and overview of his life and just, you know, what he's working on, definitely. But we will hit That's on That's awesome. We well will done. hit on the place. Yeah. Well done, you. All right, let's get back into Hard Case 3, though. Okay. We got, we got some shit. Actually, I do like, this is the first that I remember anyway so far in our reread, where we're seeing kind of the... The men behind the curtains because we're getting we're getting you know strangers big bad and now hard cases big bad as far as the corporation heads yeah and we we knew that the the man who's not a man like we already knew he was kind of the puppet master behind everything but right we've made mention many times of like corporations bad and this was the first moment where i thought oh okay is there maybe a scheme as to why it's not just that it's, the writing is that's the only idea we have there's a whole plot yeah this is the skull and bones of the corporate world in ultraverse definitely right yeah nice. so this is the guy from uh, uh strangers that owned that android chick yeah um, JD, JD hunt yeah jd hunt something um, like that and this is the guy for the Choice Corporation, and this is the dude that's been watching things from behind the scenes, as you stated, the man that is not a man this whole time. Um, it's basically back and forth. They basically have been in the in the business of like creating ultras and just like seeing ultras as an asset that they want to leverage um, from right. a from a corporate standpoint. Um, and this man behind the man is. Um, obviously some shadowy figure that even when you look head on he looks like this shadowy figure um uh, he's trying to kind of conduct and coordinate the whole thing i um you know What's, i'm just the artwork is just not doing it for me callahan starting to yeah well for me i <laughs> i actually laughed when we saw the man who's not a man in that top left panel on the right page because it's like, well, is he like DC's Obsidian, or is this just another situation where he's sitting on a <laughs> shaded area and it's just right. getting, like Hard Case Issue Two, right. where they were on a balcony, but sh shadows were everywhere. Yeah, I'm assuming that. I'm assuming it's the former. Like that's just his look. But and then yeah, the the Omega team there is straight up 90s. There's just that's. The most '90s this bandanas, ponytails, top-notch ponytails at that. Right. Um, yeah, it's just like you cannot get more generic. And the, again, this is like straight up out of an Image comic book, right? I thought right. they were not supposed to. I thought they were trying to like kind of veer away from Image, and then here we are trying to be Image comics. So these are the bad, big bad guys called the Omega Team of course yeah. that they're gonna send after hard case not a lot is happening in this story other than um hard case is kind of talking with the cop from the last couple of issues they're de he's dealing with having this giant hole in his house from the last battle of these guys attacking choice the one interesting element i guess is that choice like he's been trying to say yeah these people are after her from this corporation and then whenever she has other people inquiring about it other than hard case she she starts saying no everything's fine yeah, yeah some programming kicks in and she can't actually speak the truth so i actually did find that interesting i mean yeah. it's it's a plot point that could go somewhere interesting anyway we'll see we'll see um so he jumps out of the so he's like kind of frustrated by that he jumps out of his house like the hulk and lands on the beach treacherous talk, beach yep to talk with her about it and um so in the midst of that these dudes are watching them the omega team scoping them out and again just another battle on the same fucking beach 
it's been like what three issues and it's just well actually the first issue was someplace else i guess it was the last issue in this issue right but it just seems kind of redundant you know um i it, it just really frustrated me i wanted something more it's just more guys after choice from the choice corporation another battle on the same beach right we get a little bit of a breadcrumb with the programming. Yeah. But yeah. And again, I, I don't I don't remember being as bummed by it, but like when I read it as a kid, we are starting to move past my memory, really. Yeah. I remember bits and pieces. I do remember the choice couldn't speak you know, the truth mm-hmm. around mixed company. But I like we talked about before, I don't know how much of this is suffering from a binge read which yeah. we're not binge reading it but you know what i mean like we're not yeah. you know that month long gap sometimes particularly and i'm noticing this actually as we're reading these i my retention is not what it used to be as a kid i've actually had to in a couple of cases go back to reread things when i'm reading the new issue because i don't remember now i don't know if that's just my memory or if that's how you know they just haven't landed the plot point well enough but reading these like this it's like uh, i don't remember what this what was happening here and i don't remember that being a case as a kid as a kid i could tell you yeah oh four issues this happened ago this happened yeah anyway so i can encountered the same and while we've been rereading these i've been rereading other old comics like um i've been rereading through the larry holman gi joe series um and as you'll see on this channel um that'll be coming out and i'm having an easier time retaining those than i am this and i think it's because they're trying so much to fit so much convoluted information in the creation of a universe so soon that i i think they're just not allowing stuff to kind of breathe so it actually in a way is starting to for me feel like it's suffering from when you know, DCU was trying to establish a movie universe, but they didn't yeah. they didn't allow enough time like they did for the Marvel characters to just kind of like flesh out a little bit. You know, right. give some room. And I think it's suffering from the same thing because we're getting we're getting different villains almost every fucking issue. Um, right. there are certain circumstances like even this. Why is it that he can survive a grenade bat blast, but then they make a deal out of like but these needles from the guy called the needler this dude's yeah. name gun nut jesus christ gun nut the needler and uh, trouble is and the third trouble. one trouble but why do these needles pierce his skin and that's like he's surprised like we've had no context to understand what hard cases limitations are at all and what his like setbacks are versus his strengths I don't even understand what his full set of powers are other than he's just this big strong guy so like what the fuck like why does this matter it's just too much stuff they're fitting into so few issues is what i'm kind of thinking but yeah so the needler this ponytail guy and then he tries to fight choice and it's whatever he shoots needles into her and then trouble comes up and this guy's power is that he has barbed wire around his forehead i don't know yeah it's just a generic dude and so they fight um it's okay i mean i'm not impressed by the splash page i'm not i like the lettering of course (laughs) yeah (laughs) if you're watching since you're watching now um but there's just not a lot to go at and again it's it's like somebody took a look at jim lee and rob layfield and we're just trying to copy that style well and to go along with all that i mean it's it's filled with you know one-liners and action movie dialogue Ugh, of, of yeah. its time which i i'm cool with i i like a good one-liner action movie but you're right we've not we've yet to have in any of these really the x-men playing baseball issue yeah like there's yeah. just never a moment where i can get to know anybody yep yep Th- this Which evidently what, wasn't as big a factor to me as a kid i didn't the thing, care the thing about dudes in the 90s with their top knots their top knots like it must always be windy because <laughs> the top knots are always just kind of floating in the air right 
So hard case comes in. He takes all of them out. Um, Choice helps a little. Yeah, she helps a little. Um, and so basically what happens here is they're just like, what the fuck's going on? More news crews swarm on the on the team, or, or, or on the two of them. The man who's not a man basically says, I got this taken care of, and he sends in these quote-unquote government people to sweep up the scene and clear everybody out. Um, and then Hard Case takes her back home. And he's like, all right, well, let's take a shower, get in the jacuzzi, and you can tell me all about this, because he's, he's still having issues, like trying to trust who she is and, and whatnot. Um, right. Well, and why wouldn't he? Because that's really weird to be yeah. telling one story and then, nope, he's alive. That's not true. And then yeah. back to telling the story. So, I mean, I, I get his skepticism, but yeah, it's also pretty ballsy that he's like, all right, let's just take a shower, lady I just met. So these guys yeah, like, actually aren't government guys. They work for the man who's not a man. They're just posing as government personnel. Um, which he was just like, that's weird, but whatever. And then, and that's it. He comes back home and the strangers are there waiting for him, which if you recall, is what happened at the end of Strangers number three, if you watched right. that video. Or yep, we basically just came from hard cases sides, come to the same point. Yep. So I think next video, what we're going to do is we're going to tackle Strangers number four and hard case number four together because it's the, the, one of the first conjoined storylines that tie the books directly together. So we're going to cover both of those in the next video. Nice. I um, like it. Yeah. So, yeah. And, you know, like we've always say on almost every video, our intention is never to shit on anything. But this was probably, I think, out of all the Ultraverse books, the most least impressive one for me so far. I that this was very inconsequential to me. I don't know if the, I would go that far, but it's it's bottom rung. I mean, it's yeah. it's setting the stage for something that could be cool with the meeting of strangers. But uh, we'll see. That's going to be yeah, we'll see. It, it it right now it reeks of we've got to hurry hard case along because we need the pieces in place for that stranger storyline to happen. Yeah. I mean, the greatest takeaway out of this particular episode, this particular video, is Tim Eldred will be coming on the channel soon, ladies and gentlemen. That is really cool. Well, and I, I do like, like I said at the beginning, I, I liked the little peek at the the players behind the curtain, you know, yeah. a glimpse yeah. at them anyway. So yeah. this had, that was cool. that's the thing, It's it's this is just promise right now. There's no... There was no payoff in this issue, really. It's setting up things that could be cool. It's if they're not cool, then the, yeah, this ends up being. I I wouldn't reread this again if it didn't pay off. If, if later there's not a payoff to this. Yeah, well, I'll be interested to see what you think of the next ones. Cool. All right. Well, well thank you very much, sir. Uh, I'm. Yes. Let's go ahead and wrap it up. Um, like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Please subscribe right. to Aaron's Patreon as well as buy Aaron's books. You can buy my books and subscribe to my Patreon because we are the maker of great things, ladies and gentlemen. Great things. That's us. All right. Take care, everybody out there. Uh, stay safe and keep it psycho.